grace glorious. How many of us believe that in the house? Hallelujah. Can I hear hallelujah? Good morning, church. It's very good to be in the house of the Lord. I'd like to welcome you to the first Sunday service of 2018. Hallelujah. And let us also welcome our online congregation. Can you turn to your neighbor and just say happy new year. It's good to see you. Can you also say to them, welcome to your year of breakthrough. This year we shall have a year of exploit. Hallelujah. We have already stepped into our seventh season and it's good to be here. Hallelujah. Let us just break. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We bless your name. You're the God who knoweth it all. And you're the God who has brought us into this amazing year. Thank you, Lord, for honoring us with your word and with your promises. Thank you, Lord, for honoring us with your presence everywhere, everywhere we have been and to this date. We commit the service into your holy hands, O oh God. And we pray that this service will be the best yet in our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray for all the activities that we will perform today, O oh Lord, that let them bring you glory in the name of Jesus. We commit our brothers and sisters still coming to church, and we ask that you bring them safely to church in the name of Jesus. And we pray, O oh Lord, that every activity will touch our lives in different ways, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And may it bring you praise, and only praise in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, that you honor us with your presence. We pray that our being here will not be in vain. O oh Lord, but it will be to your own glory. We thank you for our community. We thank you for our nations. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. May your name be highly glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Enjoy the service. Happy New Year. Come on, can you find somebody to hug this morning? Tell them welcome into the presence of God. Welcome into God's presence. It's good to see you. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into God's house. Sunrise, sunset, oh God, we will give you praise in 2018, oh God. Everybody, sunrise, sunset, sunrise. 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 Sunrise
so good. Oh, isn't God so good? I woke up this morning and my feet were dancing, my tongue was rumbling, my hands were clapping. And I was just thinking, God, why me? Why so kind? Why so merciful? Why so gracious? You are my present help in time of trouble. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. You are my rock and my fortress. Father, Lord, I thank you because you are my shepherd, therefore I do not want who resonates with this? If you resonate with this, just have to applaud Jesus. Has it been good to you? Has it been kind to you? From beginning to the end, through the good, through the bad. But for his mercies will have been consumed, church. Here we are in a new year, a new season, a new day. Here to give him worship. Everything works together for good. For they that love God and are called according to his purpose. And Lord, we say thank you for everything, 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 everything. Oh, thou 
of God's goodness. The summary of it all is that God is good and greatly to be praised. We're just going to be taking um, some time, some, a few minutes to pray for our nation, United Kingdom. And as usual, our focus will be on revival. And we're just going to read um, quite quickly from the scripture, from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 9, from verse 35. And we're reading from the New King James Version. And it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciple, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Over the last um, one year, I have had an opportunity to work with a number of um, interdenominational ministries. And I've been so amazed to see and to hear testimonies of people who are doing a lot of work with young people, doing a lot of work with people who have been in drugs, people who have been in prison. I've been opportune to be in fellowships where church leaders are coming together to pray, where even in the government, where there's um, 
a fellowship of government workers. So the departments of health, the departments of work, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Dep Defense, and Christians in these organizations are coming together to have a prayer meeting. And I've seen this fellowship grow from, from numbers to numbers to numbers. So I believe that all the prayers we're praying here are definitely making a change in, 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 the, in this kingdom. So our prayers are not in vain. So I just want to encourage us this morning that let's continue to pray. And our prayer this morning is quite simple. The first prayer we're going to pray is thanking God for what he's doing because I've seen lives change. I've seen young people coming to God. So let's lift up our voice and say, Lord, thank you for 2018, for what you're going to do in this nation, for children that are going to come to know the Lord, for things that are going to happen in the place of parliament. Let's thank him because he's not asleep. He said he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Let's lift up the name of Jesus in this nation because he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. The Bible says he went around doing good and that is how God is going to go around in our communities in our nation this year doing good healing sick restoring people unto himself even in that vein as we're praying and thanking God for the things that he's doing for lives that are being changed let also let's also pray that this revival we've been praying for will start from us We'll start from the church. We'll start from us as, as individuals. We'll start from our homes. And that we will be those laborers. You and I will be the laborers that he will send out into the streets, into our communities, into our places of work. That we will carry the gospel. We will go forth in his name, lifting up the name of Jesus like a banner in the sky. We will lift up his holy name and declare his name, declare his purpose. And we will preach the gospel with boldness. That God will give us a passion for souls. He will give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness. He will give us a hunger and thirst for prayer. He will give us a hunger and thirst for his word. Let's pray that he will begin to use us, that we will go and we will step out of the boat. We will step out of the com our comfort zone and we will boldly declare his word in every opportunity that he can bring our way, that we will use it to the praise of and glory of his holy name. Our Father, we just want to give you praise. Thank you for everything that you're doing in this nation. Father, we thank you because we have declared, oh God, that this nation belongs to you, oh God. You said we shall declare a thing and it will come to pass, oh God. Father, we declare this nation belongs to you, oh God. We lift up the leadership of this nation into your hands, oh God. We lift up, oh God, the entire parliament, oh God. We pray that, Lord God Almighty, you will turn their hearts, oh God, to please you this year, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that there will be unity in the church, oh God. Father, we pray that there will be oneness, oh God. We pray that this revival Bible will start from us, oh God. Lord, that you will pour out your spirit afresh upon us. Father, Lord God Almighty, that you will set us ablaze for your glory, oh God. That in our midst, oh God, you will do a new thing, oh God. That signs and wonders will follow. And every eye will see and testify that there is a God in this nation. That Jesus will be God over this nation. Father, we thank you for answer prayers, oh God. We thank you because you will do more than we can ask or imagine. To the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue worshiping the Lord and we're going to bring our tithes and our offerings before the Lord this morning. Today is a Thanksgiving service and so we will be giving, so we will have a Thanksgiving offering separate from this. And so ladies and gentlemen, as you bring your tithes and your offerings out, the instructions are behind me on the screen. This is our first Sunday together. There's something about the firsts. There's something about when God starts something. And so as you give this morning, I want you to always remember that as you give this morning, you are bringing light into somebody's world. You're making sure that this year will be great for somebody you may never meet. You're making sure that somebody who does not have, somebody who is in somebody who needs to be visited, appreciated, and valued, you're making that happen. And the Bible says very clearly that God will in turn make that happen on your behalf. And so as we give, we lean upon the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he makes our offerings acceptable to the Lord. We do say, and we do reiterate, if you are a guest, this is not compulsory. We encourage you to do so because we believe the promises of our God. 
And as you give, ladies and gentlemen, and I leave you in the safe hands of our choir, may the grace of our Lord and Savior that goes with giving rest and abide upon you now and throughout the year. And everybody said, Amen. I leave you in the safe hands of the choir. Amen. Amen. You know, centuries and centuries ago, men and women of God were inspired to put heartwarming lyrics to soul-stirring melodies. And these songs became a rich heritage for the church and were passed down generation to generation. So this morning, we want to take one of these treasured hymns, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. So when you're done filling in your offering envelopes, if you'll kindly rise and join us, and let's lift this anthem of praise to God together. Amen. him with a song. Can somebody praise our God with a clap offering? You are not just clapping, you are praising. You are praising. You are praising him. Let your hands convey what is on your heart. You are saying to God Almighty, you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy to be magnified in this place. Go on, go on. The song says, angels help us to adore him. In this instance, 
It is your hands you are employing to adore our God. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you, oh God. We adore you. We adore you, oh God. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. I'd like you to please turn to somebody. Turn, turn to somebody. Please turn to make make sure you've, you're turning to somebody. If you're looking at me, then you're not turning to somebody. So turn to somebody. Make sure you are facing somebody. Make sure you're facing somebody. If you're not facing somebody, you are in rebellion in 2018. So you're facing somebody. Are you facing somebody? Now tell the person. Tell them, my brother, my sister. The last time I saw you in a Sunday service was last year. So allow me to say, Happy New Year. Go on, go on, say a big Happy New Year to that person. Now find three more people and go around and say to them, Happy New Year. Because the last time you saw somebody was last year. And it's a Happy New Year. It's a Happy New Year. That's a happy new year. Go on, go on, hug somebody and say happy new year. Now, ladies and, la ladies and gentlemen, no, no, no. no in 2018, in 20, can we agree something? Can we agree something? In 2018, you will not be too quick to sit down. Can we agree? In 2018, you will not be too quick. To, so can you please remain standing? Because we need to do one more thing. Can you please tell our online congregation that the last time you joined us, go on, tell them the last time you joined us. The last time you joined us. Was last year. Was last year. So we want to say to you, so to say all over the world, Happy New Year. Go on, wave at our online congregation. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a new year. It is a new beginning. And guess what? We want to celebrate those whose birthdays are the first month of the year. You were born in the month of January. You are the starters of the year. And we want to thank God for your life. We want to celebrate your birthdays with you. So if you're born in the month of January, can you please dance? Please, please dance forward as we thank God for your life and thank God for a new year. Choir, help us to celebrate. Ladies and gentlemen, we really are grateful to God for life. 
that God has preserved us into this new year. And we want to use our brothers and sisters as a point of contact. We want to thank God for their lives, but thanking God for our lives. We also want to pray into their life, knowing that as we sow prayer into their life, we are also praying for our lives for 2018. So can I ask you to please stretch out your hands towards our brothers and sisters. And we just say, Lord, thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister. May it please you to bless them specially this year, 2018. And those of you, it's your birthday this month of January, the new year, 2018. You want to ask God, petition God for a new thing this year, a new thing this year. That God will do something special as we start this year. Oh God, oh God, we thank you for a new year. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you. Church, let's lift up our voices and just pray for our brothers and sisters. And those of you in front, you're praying for yourself that God will do a new thing. God will do something special this year, 2018. Go on for one more minute. One more minute, church. One more minute. Oh, Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful, oh God. Grateful. Grateful. Oh, blessed. Blessed be your name. Mali de Oh, narimos koloriatesh. Oh, blessed be your holy name, O oh God. And so, Father, we, we thank you and we bless you for these, your children. The first fruit for us as a church of a year in which there'll be so much laughter. Amen. The first fruit of a year that we all will remember as our seventh season. Amen. The first fruit of a year in which you have promised to do new things in our lives, in the city, in the nation, in your church. We thank you for each life as we bless your holy name for the grace that has allowed us to set our feet in 2018. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And together we say, Amen, 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 Amen. We want to appreciate all those of you who are celebrating your birthdays. And I know some of you, because this is the seventh, some of you have already celebrated your birthdays. Um, we also want to especially um, appreciate some of our leadership team that will be celebrating or have already celebrated their birthdays. Um, so on the 2nd of January, um, Pastor Wally Gibson White <laughs> celebrated his birthday. So he's not here, Wally is not here, okay. Um, on the uh, 10th of January, Pastor Ibukun Ajayi will be celebrating his birthday. <laughs> on the 17th of January, um, Deacon Ade Ojomo will be celebrating his birthday. On the 23rd of January, Right Reverend Canon <laughs> Yemi Adedeji, pastor, will be celebrating his birthday. <laughs> and if, if any of our leaders are, are here, please can you come up to the platform? Just allow us to, yeah, just allow us to, allow us to. I can never, never forget that one. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't worry. I can't forget that. <laughs> Come, come up, all the leaders, come up to the platform. Everyone was trying to remind me. I said, how can I ever forget that? I woke up this morning and I told uh, Shola that this is one of the most precious human beings in my sight at this point in time in my life. I am just so grateful for her and for what she does for me, for my family. Um, and today is her birthday. Pastor Bola Awe. Make, make her welcome as she comes up. Today, today is actually her birthday. Amen. Amen. 
so we, we, we want to, we want to uh, appreciate everyone who's celebrating their birthday in January. Um, we want to a- appreciate our leaders. Uh, anything that happens in Jesus' house is a collection of the leadership that makes it happen. It's not a one-person ministry. It has never been. It's people working hard, sometimes behind the scenes. Uh, but doing an amazing work to make it happen. So happy birthday to everybody. The, uh, the church, the leaders are going to come and shake hands. Um, but before we do that, um, I just want to bless these this guys up here. Um, can I have an usher, please? Father, we just thank you. And I need ushers to move very quickly. We just thank you and bless you. We thank you for this, your daughter, who celebrates her birthday today. Lord, surprise her with what you will do, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for the amazing work that Revy does behind the scenes, a lot of them. Lord, this year, oh God, you're calling him into higher places. You're calling him into a deeper walk with you. Lord, calling him to extend the bridge that he is. Help him to do so in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for your son, Ibukun. We thank you for your plans for him this year. May this year really be a year of expansion for him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday to everybody. The pastors are going to come, the ministers, and shake your hands. God bless you. Happy birthday. We are saying we love you. You know, there's so many things to be grateful about 2017 uh, for. So many things that God did in our lives, apart from preserving our lives. And one of the things that we appreciated was that last year, 2017, we had probably the greatest numbers of babies born to this church in the year 2017. Go on, we can appreciate God for that. We can appreciate God. But ladies and gentlemen, it is the way of God to do exceedingly beyond what he has done in the past. So I'm trusting that in 2018, there will be more babies born this year. That the word of God that none shall be barren will be fulfilled in this house. And as we start the year 2017, we start, um, 2018, I beg your pardon, we start with thanksgiving. Thanking God for life and thanking God for the gift of the babies that he has given us. And so this morning, we want to join two families as they dedicate their baby girls to God. So ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the family and friends of Ladiko and Omolade Fashade as they dedicate their baby girls. And we welcome the family and friends of Femi and Christine Asani as they dedicate their baby girl as well. Go on, church. Let's celebrate with them as, as they come. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for oh, this girl.
Hallelujah. Father, we are so grateful, O oh God. And Lord, we start this year thanking you, not just for life, but the gifts that you've given us in this wonderful children, O oh God. Lord, with wisdom, their parents have brought them this morning to dedicate them to you. And so, Lord, we present Enyolau Lua, Joanna, Tolua Lashe, Ulua Damiloju, Morola Yo, to you, O oh God. Father, Joanna means God is gracious. And we're grateful that you've been gracious to this family, O oh God. Tolu Alashe, God's will be done. We're asking in her life, O oh God, that your will be done. Murolayo means that I have found wealth to rejoice in. And so, Father, we speak into the future of this child, O oh God, that our future will be bright. Our, our future will be joyous, O oh God. She is a gift from you. She will not bring sorrow to this family, O oh God. Lord God Almighty, she will fulfill her purpose in this world, O oh God. And so, Lord, we dedicate her to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for Gabriella, Ulua Tamilore, for Lashade, Eyingi Belem, Juliet. Father, thank you because Gabriella means a woman of God. And so shall it be, O oh God, that all the days of her life she will serve you, O oh God. Ulua Tamilore, you have blessed this family with this gift. Once again, may this gift not bring sorrow, O oh God. Inyingi Belem means sweet mother. That, Lord, we speak into our future. Not only will she grow up, O oh God, but she will become a mother herself. And Lord God Almighty, we commit her future into your hands. That Lord God Almighty, all the days of our life, you will guide her, O oh God. And she will fulfill purpose, O oh God. So we dedicate her to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. By reason of dedication, O oh Lord, we're asking, O oh covenant keeping God, that these ones will not lack any good thing all the days of their life. That they will know peace all the days of their lives, O oh God. They will know good health all the days of their lives. They will not lack any good thing, Father. But most importantly, let their names be written in the book of life, O oh God. And when they get to the age of volition, may they speedily give their lives to you. Thank you, everlasting Father. Father, we stand on your altar at the beginning of this year, 2018. What you did for us in giving children in 2017 may it please you to exceed in this year 2018 that all those that have been believing and waiting may 2018 be the year of manifestation thank you lord our god in Jesus' name we have prayed amen amen praise the lord congratulations this is any Lewis certificate of dedication and Gabriella's certificate of dedication. Congratulations. For some God, for some God, mighty God, Father, you're some God, mighty God. So we give you praise. For some God, for some God, Lord, we give you Amen. Praise God. Amen. Go and give God a clap offering. Go on. You can do it. And then you may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Amen. Well, good morning, Jesus House. 
I'd like to, oh, thank you. I'd like to use this opportunity to say a uh, happy new year to every single one of us. And to those of us watching online, happy new year. Um, when I woke up this morning, as I knelt down, I, a scripture just dropped in my heart. And it was almost like another layer on the scriptures that we've been, we've been heard, we've heard. And it was from Isaiah 3.10. And it said, say to the righteous, it shall be well with you. And I knew that for me and for all of us, that was a confirmation of the words that we've been hearing, the words that it is our seventh season, and the word that behold, the Lord is doing a new thing in our lives. And so say to the person to your left and to your right that you are the righteous and it shall be well with you in 2018. Amen. And, um, I'm, I'm very excited about this year. Um, very excited because of what we, what we sense, what we've heard about what God wants to do in our lives. Um, the whole uh, last two, three months of last year, it's obvious that God was building up on something where God began to speak to us about our, our seventh season um, and how as a people we're entering that seventh season where uh, the, the, the servant was going to come back and the news wasn't going to be the same, uh, that there was nothing. The news this time was that he had seen a sign on the horizon that what you have been believing God for and praying for was going to come to pass. And then in the last two, two, three weeks of the year, two weeks of the year, when I began to turn my mind towards the next year, and God spoke a clear word to me, a word that we kind of will break down in the next two, three weeks, um, out, of, out of the prophet Isaiah's writing, Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Uh, and the crux of that word is that God will do a new thing. Um, and it will be like, a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. If you really understand that, and maybe more understanding will come in the next few weeks, it would excite you. And then to add to that, this word that shall I receive this morning, somebody here should just be excited that God is speaking very clearly to them about what he wants to do in our lives. So let's buckle our, our, our belts, our seat belts. Um, now, it's not going to come without any effort on our part and we will talk again about what what is required from us it's not like god is saying i'm ready if you are ready and we are saying to god we are ready for you to do what you have purposed and planned in our lives in our city and in our nation amen i i, I hope you're as excited as i am you, you well that's four people and pastor Dan really i hope you are as excited as we are Okay, that's about uh, Siam, Dinrile, and another 20 people. I hope you are as excited as we are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to pray um, for you. We want to pray. There's something powerful in a prayer of agreement um, that the church hasn't fully tapped into. When two people agree concerning a thing. And so Shola and I want to agree concerning God's plans for your life and how God is going to use you to fulfill his plans. And I'm just, we're asking that you will be in agreement with us. And so, Heavenly Father, we just thank you at the start of the year, the first service as a church family. And Shola and I stand before you, O God, bringing each member of this congregation, each person who is passing through and who is worshiping with us today, each person who's listening online or watching by television, we bring each person before you, O oh God. And Lord, we come in agreement that the word that you have spoken concerning their seventh season, concerning the new thing that you intend to do, concerning how it is well with them, we're asking Heavenly Father, 
that come the end of 2018, they will look back, each person, and say of a truth, this word has come to pass in my life. We stand in agreement concerning this nation. As we declare that truly you will do a new thing in this nation. You will cause rivers to run in the desert and make a way in the wilderness, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you. We pronounce a blessing upon each person that is under the sound of my voice. That, Father, that blessing will accomplish what you have purposed that it should accomplish. And all the glory is yours. In Jesus' name. And together we say, Amen. 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 Praise God. Happy New Year. Go on, give God Happy a clap offering again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And let's appreciate once again our worship ministry, our music ministry for, for doing a wonderful job. Why don't you turn in, in your Bibles or open up your Bibles to the book of Psalms. Uh, specifically Psalms 124 Psalms 124 I'd like us to read this psalm together Psalms 124 if we read together let's read one two go if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul, then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side if God had not been for us what if I think that's what the NLT says what if God had not been on our side you know as we start the year traditionally in the redeemed Christian Church of God the first Sunday of the month is one that is dedicated to and focused on thanksgiving, a heart of gratitude to God. There are not many psalms that maybe as strongly direct us towards being so grateful to God as this psalm. In fact, the first sentence really says it all. What if the Lord had not been uh, on our side? What if God in 2017 had not been on our side? If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. David called Israel together and Israel had been delivered from a string of enemies and David was so overwhelmed at God's, how gracious God had been how merciful God had been. And I'm sure he was aware that he was very undeserving and the nation was very undeserving of God's mercy. That he penned this psalm as a song to gather the nation to a place of gratitude and thanksgiving towards God. And he starts with that sentence that seems really to be, in a sense, out of place. And you know, when you read the historical texts, the, the writers of the Bible tried to join it together to try and create some sort of flow. And that's why it even seems to have a flow. Because originally, it's just a question that stands out. 
What if the Lord had not been on our side? And you know, there's some questions that you ask that answer themselves. In fact, the question and the silence that follows the question says a lot. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? If God had not been on my side, and you walk away. How many know you've said so much? Does somebody understand what I'm saying? What if God had not been on my side? And you end it there. But in ending it there, the silence has spoken volumes. You have said so much just by the sentence. You have actually said all that there is to say. Because what you're saying is, in that sentence, if God had not been on my side, and you just walk away, you've said, I would have been finished. Without God, I couldn't have made it. Only God could have ensured that I am standing where I'm standing. And then he goes on. And you know, this could be a personal psalm. It doesn't necessarily have to be the nation of Israel. You could write your own psalm. What if God had not been on my side? Let Agu now say. And I tell you, I can write my own psalm of 2017. When this happened, when that happened, how you took me through this, how we overcame this. And you know, if you don't know what to write, I can help you write your psalm for 2017. Because there are certain things that you don't need to know the details to know that if you're in good health in 2018, someone kept you in good health. And guess what? Even if your health is struggling, the fact that you can have hope in a healer is enough to give thanksgiving for. That someone protected you through David had specifics, and some of us might have specifics. When the men rose against us, when they tried to swallow us alive, when their anger and their wrath was kindled against us. And some of us might have specifics where we say when this happened and when that happened. But believe me, when you see the whole picture when you get to heaven, you will marvel at what God protected you from that you have no idea about. And when he finishes going through all these things, he, 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 he interjects with something that we all should come to. When you ask yourself that question, if it had not been for the Lord, who, what if God had not been on our side? And when that question forces you to do what it should, because you see, that question forces you to think. And it is impossible to thank God without engaging our mental realm, our mind. Because the mind records the reasons to thank God. And sometimes we need to dredge these things out. Because human nature, when God has done, we quickly move on to the next request to God, we have for God. But sometimes God is saying, like he said to the ten leper, to the, to the lepers, when one came back to thank Jesus, where are the nine? It's not that God doesn't know that he healed the lepers, but he's saying, you know, how about somebody coming to say thank you for what I have done? Isn't that the right thing to do? That's what Jesus was saying, where are the nine? And so today, we want to do the right thing. No requests. Not asking him for anything. Not thinking about what he will do, except in the vein, on the line of saying thank you for it. But today we just want to come and say, Lord, when we answer that question, what if you had not been on our side? It leads us to where, where the psalmist arrives in verse 6. He says, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord. Or the New Living Translation says, praises to God. I think that's what it says. Who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. That, that's the only place we can arrive at. 
What, what if God had not been on our side? Can you think about that for a minute? I want you to engage your mind. What if he hadn't been on your, your side in 2017? What if he hadn't been there for you? Go on, think about it. Think about it. Engage your mind. Cast your mind back. The many travels. What if he hadn't been there? The challenges at work, perhaps. What if he hadn't been there? The provision. What if he hadn't provided? The relationships. What if he hadn't been there? And maybe there's someone here who went through some tough times and you just thought, I don't think I can make it. But guess what? You're standing in 2018. How did you make it? In your own strength? No. God was there for you. So for a minute or two, just cast your mind back. And you know, look at me for a second. Let's just make this point. The negative helps you understand the positive. So what if God had not been there? And then think about what would have happened. God, if you hadn't been there, this certainly wouldn't have happened. That certainly wouldn't have happened. This certainly wouldn't have happened. The psalmist says, I slept and I woke up because the Lord sustains me. So God, what if you hadn't sustained me? And as you think about what could have been, guess what? Except your heart is cold, an emotion will start to well up in you. And it's just the motion of gratitude that, God, you were there for me. So go on, just bow your heads and think, what, what if, God, you had not been on our side? What if? What if? Think about it. Father, we just thank you. We bless you, God. We can only arrive at one place. That's a place where we just want to say thank you to God. But let me end on this note. The psalmist starts with a question. The question forces him to think. The psalmist recounts as much as he knows, as much as concerns the nation, God's grace, graciousness, his, his deliverance. The psalmist arrives at a place where the only conclusion is to say, blessed be the Lord, praise to God. And then he gives reasons for that, because God was there with them. But then he ends in the, in the eighth verse by declaring our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And at that point, he's not speaking just about the past. Because you see, the past has a way of guaranteeing your present and, and bringing an assurance of the future. Because what you're saying, what the psalmist was saying is that that same God that helped us when the men rose up against us. That helped us when their anger was kindled against us. That same God is available to help us today and will help us tomorrow. So how do I know that 2018 is going to be an amazing year for you? A year of expansion. The year that you will declare this is my seventh season. How do I know that? I know that because... The God who saw you through 2017 
the God who started to speak a, a very clear prophetic word to us about our seventh season the God who confirmed that word by speaking to us about him doing a new thing the God who brought a word this morning to, to tell you that it is well that same God that did it in 2017 is already sending signs that I'm with you on the 7th of January 2018 and I will be with, with you at the end of 2018. Can someone say amen? And so we're left, we, we, we can't do anything but be like the psalmist where we are overwhelmed by God's goodness. And that first question really is one where someone is overwhelmed. You know, the Middle Eastern cultures, like some of the African and Asian cultures, are very expressive in, 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 in their gesticulations, in their actions. Sometimes actions say more than words. So I can't, I can't imagine that the psalmist just said, said, if God had not been on our side. No, 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 no. He must have said it with body language that, that sent a message to the people. If God hmm, had not been on our side, what if God had not been for us, Mark? What if, Mark, all those things we went through, God had not been there? What if God had not heard our little prayers? Not that we prayed to the level that we could make a demand on heaven that we have prayed. What if God had not instigated the fasting? What if God had not moved without the prayer and the fasting? What if God, Reverend Yemi, had not encouraged us? What if the many mistakes we made, God had not covered it? What if God had chosen to judge us instead of extending mercy? What if God had not held that family together? What if God had not stepped in when everybody else failed? What if God had not brought good health? What if God had not brought healing? What if God had allowed depression to take root? What if God had not stepped in in depression and chased the darkness of depression away? What if God had not prevented the plane from crashing? What if God had not stopped the car from skidding off the road? What if God had not stepped in when the car hit the lamppost and yet the person is still here? What if God had not sent that uncle to bless? What if God had not sustained you in that job? What if God had allowed the company to collapse? The company is still going strong simply because of you. What if God had allowed that relationship to start that would have caused the perversion of destiny? And I can go on and on. What if God had not heard our cry for revival for this nation and had allowed this nation to go the way of some other nations? What if God had not? You write your story. But then, whatever your story is, it must end at this song, I became.
Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we bring our sacrifice of worship onto your throne, O God. Lord, when we think, we thank. Lord, you've been good, you've been merciful, you've been kind. Our shield, our buckler, our present help in time of trouble. Lord, the glory and the lifter of our heads, Lord. You are our source, you are our song. Lord, you are the one that lifted our feet from the mary clay and put it upon the rock to stay. Lord, but for your grace, but for your mercy. Lord, where will we be? What song will we sing today? Lord, we thank you because you've woken us up in the morning. Lord, you have given us a song to sing in the evening. Lord, you have laid our heads to red at night, oh God. And Lord, you have brought us into a new year, into a new season, into a new day. Lord, you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the worship, oh God. You deserve all the worship. You deserve. Each life under the sound of my voice will be a testimony that you will manifest your power through us and in us, that you will use us to glorify your name, Heavenly Father, that you will use us to fulfill your plans and purposes, O God. That just because of what you do in our lives, people will be attracted to the God we serve. We bless you, Heavenly Father. May each person here listening online, may each person be a testimony, Heavenly Father. A collection of testimonies that will point very strongly to a gracious God. We bless you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs>